Let's be honest, nobody respected a Hyundai owner. They were the motoring equivalent of wearing socks with sandals. Practical, maybe? Stylish? Never. But something strange happened. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes of a thousand burnt-out clutches, Hyundai and Kia pulled themselves together. They stopped churning out automotive abominations and started making, well, decent cars. How did they do it? Let's delve into the mystery, shall we? The first problem was obvious quality, or rather, the distinct lack of it. Hyundai's and Kaya's were about as reliable as a politician's promise. They spent more time in the garage than on the road. Owners became intimately familiar with their local mechanics. Not in a good way. Then there was the issue of image. Hyundai and Kia were seen as the cheap and cheerful options. The cars you bought when you couldn't afford anything better. They were the automotive equivalent of off-brand cereal. Sure, they filled you up, but they lacked that certain something. But here's the thing. Hyundai and Kia recognized their shortcomings. They knew they couldn't keep flogging cheap, unreliable cars forever. The market was changing. People wanted more than just basic transportation. They wanted style, performance, and reliability. And guess what? Hyundai and Kia were ready to give it to them. One of the smartest moves Hyundai made was launching the Genesis brand. This wasn't just about slapping a new badge on an old car and hoping nobody noticed. Oh no, Genesis was different. It was aimed squarely at the luxury market, taking on the likes of BMW and Mercedes. And you know what? It worked. Genesis cars were sleek, sophisticated, and packed with technology. They were good to drive. They were reliable. And they didn't cost the earth. Suddenly, Hyundai wasn't just the cheap option anymore. They were a serious contender in the luxury market. This had a ripple effect on the Hyundai and Kia brands. People started to see them in a new light. If they could build a car as good as the Genesis, then surely their more affordable models couldn't be that bad, right? But the real masterstroke? Their foray into the electric vehicle market. The EV game was a chance for a fresh start, a clean slate, and Hyundai and Kia grabbed it with both hands. They weren't afraid to take risks, to innovate, to push the boundaries. The Hyundai Kona Electric and Kia e Niro were both brilliant EVs. They were stylish, practical, and had a decent range, and crucially, they were affordable. Hyundai and Kia realized that most people weren't willing to shell out a small fortune for an electric car. They wanted something that made financial sense. This approach paid dividends. Hyundai and Kia quickly became major players in the EV market. They were even giving Tesla a run for their money. Who would have thought it? The companies that once couldn't build a reliable petrol engine were now leading the charge in electric mobility. Section 5, From Shoddy to Snazzy, A Familiar Tale This story of redemption isn't unique to the automotive industry. Remember when Samsung was synonymous with cheap and cheerful electronics? When nobody in their right mind would buy a Korean phone? Look at them now. Samsung is a global powerhouse producing some of the most desirable smartphones and TVs on the market. Or take LG another Korean company that went from zero to hero. They used to be known for making budget-friendly appliances that were lucky to last a year. Now, they're at the cutting edge of technology, producing stunning OLED TVs and innovative home appliances. The lesson here is clear. Never underestimate the underdog. Companies can change. They can adapt. They can learn from their mistakes. And they can come back stronger than ever. Just ask Hyundai and Kia. Section 6, The Korean Comeback Kings. So there you have it. Hyundai and Kia have completed one of the most remarkable turnarounds in automotive history. They've gone from being the laughingstock of the industry to major players on the global stage. They're producing cars that are stylish, desirable, and dare I say it, even a little bit cool. But it's not just about good looks and fancy technology. Hyundai and Kia have also cracked the code on reliability. Their cars are now consistently ranked among the most dependable on the market. Remember all those jokes about dodgy door handles? Well, you don't hear them so much anymore. The Korean giants have proven that they're here to stay. They're not just making cars anymore. They're making waves, and the established automotive giants are starting to take notice. The game has changed, and Hyundai and Kia are leading the charge. Section 7. Watch out, Tesla, and everyone else. The electric vehicle market is where Hyundai and Kia are really making their mark, they're not just dipping their toes in the water, they're diving in head first, and they're making a big splash. Their EV lineup is expanding rapidly, with models to suit every taste and budget. 
From the stylish Ionic 5 to the practical Nero EV, Hyundai and Kia are offering compelling alternatives to Tesla, and they're doing it at a price point that's hard to ignore. Tesla might have the brand recognition and the supercharger network, but Hyundai and Kia are hot on their heels. But it's not just Tesla that should be worried. The established automotive giants are also feeling the heat. They were slow to react to the EV revolution and now they're playing catch up. Hyundai and Kia, on the other hand, were quick to embrace the electric future, and they're reaping the rewards. Section 8. The Rise of the Red Dragon? But the Korean wave is just the tip of the iceberg. The automotive landscape is changing at a dizzying pace. New players are emerging and they're not afraid to shake things up, and nowhere is this more evident than in China. Chinese automakers are coming of age. They're investing heavily in research and development, and they're producing some seriously impressive vehicles. Companies like BYD, NIO, and Xpeng are making waves both domestically and internationally. They're not just building cheap knockoffs anymore. They're innovating, they're pushing boundaries, and they're gunning for the global market. The rise of Chinese automakers is a game changer. They have the potential to disrupt the industry in a way we haven't seen before. They have the manufacturing might, the technological prowess, and the ambition to become major players on the global stage. The question is, are the established automotive giants prepared for the challenge? Section 9. The future's electric but who's driving? One thing's for sure, the future of the automotive industry is electric. Governments around the world are setting ambitious targets for EV adoption. Consumers are becoming more environmentally conscious. And the technology is improving all the time. The internal combustion engine's days are numbered, but who will be the winners and losers in this brave new electric world? Will Tesla be able to maintain its dominance? Will the traditional automotive giants be able to adapt in time? Or will Chinese automakers steal the show? The next decade will be a fascinating time for the automotive industry. We're on the cusp of a revolution. The cars of the future will be cleaner, smarter, and more connected than ever before. Buckle up, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Section 10. Buckle up, it's going to be a bumpy ride. The automotive industry is at a crossroads. The old order is being challenged. New technologies are emerging, and the balance of power is shifting. The next few years will be critical. The decisions made today will shape the industry for decades to come. One thing's for certain, the future is electric. But it's not just about the cars themselves. It's about the entire ecosystem. Charging infrastructure, battery technology, autonomous driving, these are all crucial pieces of the puzzle. The companies that can successfully navigate this complex landscape will be the ones that thrive. It will require innovation, collaboration, and a willingness to embrace change. The stakes have never been higher. Have. Section 11. In conclusion by Adesha. So, what have we learned today? Well, Hyundai and Kia have pulled off a blinder. They've gone from making cars that were about as appealing as a week-old sandwich to producing some of the most desirable vehicles on the market. It's a remarkable turnaround and one that should serve as an inspiration to struggling companies everywhere. But the bigger picture is even more intriguing. The automotive industry is in a state of flux. The old rules no longer apply. The rise of electric vehicles, autonomous driving, and connected cars is transforming the industry at an unprecedented pace. It's a time of great opportunity but also great uncertainty. Who will emerge victorious from this automotive revolution? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure it's going to be one hell of a ride. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a Dacia Sandero to review. Apparently it's the best car in the world, or something.